out of this. Greetings, I'm Shad, and recently I've made a video on why I think the nunchucks are not a good weapon, and I even go a bit further than that, I think they're kind of rubbish. And uh, that video is getting quite a bit of attention, which I'm very happy about of course, and it's also caused a lot of discussion. It's the type of video that I expect people are going to make reply videos to. And, uh, to get a bit of a jump on on these reply videos, I don't know if any of them been made yet, this is the day after having uploaded this video, I'm making this one because I get the feeling that I'm I'm able to preempt a lot of the counter arguments people are making, one being that uh, I see signs of this in the comments below. Now, a lot of people, not everyone, in fact most people actually get the point of the video that I'm making, but some people have missed the point entirely. So one of the first things that people who have objected to my video are trying to point out is uh, the tests that I did. And the point of the test was to compare power generation. And yes, they bounce off and hit me using them, and that was to show it can happen, but the purpose of those tests were not specifically to go into all the different ways in which you might be able to hit it to reduce the chance of it hitting you. Because in my mind, those are largely irrelevant, because no matter what you do to try and reduce the chance of these things bouncing to hit back you, they still have a chance of doing it. No matter how good you are with nunchucks, no matter how much you've trained with a master and you know every single angle of attack to help try and mitigate their danger to the user, they are far, vastly, like orders of magnitude, more capable of hitting the user than any other weapon that I can really think of, including the flail, all right? So even if you train in such a way to reduce the likelihood that it might, it still can, and it is still far more likely than any other weapon. Ergo, they're garbage. Know your place, trash. Simply put, a good effective weapon should not have such a high capacity of striking the user even if they're trained in them. Because you're trained with them, there's still a chance that it can happen, and it often does, even with people who've trained with them. Like, there are people who say, I'm trained with heaps and heaps of years, and, uh, you know, oh, oh, it's only hit me five times, twice, whatever. Uh, okay, do you know how many times I've hit myself with a stick or my own fists in training? Zero. And that was actually a funny comment in response to my first video. It's like someone said, they're better than nothing? I don't know, Shad. I've never hit myself with my own fist and I got a good chuckle out. But it's actually a valid point, okay? Now, would that make you not want to use them at all? No, because there are a lot of reasons why people would want to use them. Tradition and how fancy they are being the biggest ones, in my opinion, not necessarily their effectiveness, because I think um, we tend to try and justify things that look cool, that we have uh, some emotional connection to, you know, Bruce use them and then look for ways to justify them, oftentimes concluding on less efficient techniques to do with them that yes they do work but are more difficult to pull off with them than if you were to use another weapon or just even your bare hands. But of course you can generate more power with these things than your bare hands. That's kind of one, the thing that classifies it as a weapon essentially. But I just want to re-emphasize the primary point that I'm making here is that it doesn't matter how good you are with them, doesn't matter how trained you are in terms of whatever strikes, these things have a much greater capacity capacity to deflect and hit you more so than, I, like I said, any other weapon I can think of. Hence, they're one of the garbage tier weapons. I'm just filming this on my phone briefly because unfortunately some people miss the purpose of the demonstration. The purpose of the last demonstration was to compare max power that you can produce with the nunchucks, okay? And so that's trying to hit full on right there at a place that most of the force will get transferred into. It wasn't a demonstration to show different techniques that you can hit safer because of course when you use max force like that you get less control over the end and some people have actually tried to say that i don't even know how to strike safely with nunchucks where it won't deflect and hit me which is retarded because of course i know how to hit with nunchucks right and not hit myself like i said i do have experience in this and so people say that oh you don't even know like did you catch the point of the test. I don't think you did. So yes, I get that there are way more ways in which you can hit and not have it deflect and hit yourself. Obviously. The point, as I think I might have already said in this video, because I don't know where I'm going to interject this, you know, um, you know, bonus thing in the video, is that no matter how much extra control that you're going to be trying to use with the nunchucks, okay, 
there's a huge amount of unpredictability in it and they have a much greater chance of still deflecting and hitting you than any other weapon that most other weapons, okay? Now, I won't go as far to be absolute, but most other weapons have a higher chance of deflecting and hitting you. The other thing, right? And this is a disingenuous thing that some people do when they're trying to show. I'm hitting at an inanimate bloody target. He's not moving, okay? And so the fact that I have a lot of control here, and just go hit, back in, and I'm all good, right? It's not gonna be that still in a real fight. And so, like for instance, if you hit with the tip, much less chance of it deflecting than if it hits something full on, okay? So figuring out your distance is quite important. So when you wanna go and hit like that, you have control and protection because there's a lot of distance. But sometimes, what if he rushed you, okay? And when you go where you're thinking you're gonna be striking, on the tip, he runs in and it hits there, and then there's a deflection that hits you. You don't have that risk with so many other weapons that can achieve what the nunchucks might be able to achieve with a lot of training right off the bat. You can be more lethal with a stick with far less training than with nunchucks, and you still don't have that random danger of uh, they lift an arm or they move too close in or something like that, where you do a hit and then a re. It, rebound and could hit you in any number of ways. So hitting a static target is not a true fair representation of how much control people claim they can get out of nunchucks because as I mentioned, out of any other weapon, they have a much higher chance of deflection, especially if you do a full big hit. I didn't want to do it because I'm not wearing a mask. But if I just get hit like that, as we were showing before, right there, okay? So say you're doing it and you think you are safe, as I showed, what you want to do a hit like that, and then they just come in closer, and the hit there, you see that rebound, right there, okay? You can try and manipulate and control your opponent, but you're not literally in control of them. And so as soon as you mis-aim something, and this will happen if you're a master even, you can't prevent this 100% of the time, you will lose control over your weapon. You don't want that in a weapon. You need to be able to control your weapon as much as possible. But you can't fully control this after the first hit because you can't control your opponent. They're garbage. The next point I do want to bring up is that the test we did on power transfer were not fully valid because the dummy was constantly on uneven ground and different ground every time he fell over. And there were rocks and sticks underneath him which put him off balance. So this time, look what we got here, okay? This is a consistent medium for him to rest on where his balance is going to be the same between each strike. And so, comparing power, all right? I reckon I could knock him over. Ah. Nah, by the way, it hit my arm hard then. Again, this is about power. I'm not trying to hit with control, I'm just this is about the max power you can get out of these things. He's not falling over. Wacky stick time on the same ground. Oh, he was so close. He was so close then. Another point following on from the demonstrations that we just did, okay? You have more control over the nunchucks so they won't deflect nearly as wildly when you don't hit with full force. And people have even been saying that in the comments, like, Shad, you're being disingenuous, you're hitting with full force, of course, there's going to be less control. So what that essentially means then, if you want less chance of the nunchucks deflecting and hitting you back by doing a hit with more control, like that, okay? That means to have less chance of being hit, you need to hit with less power, which makes it even more of a crap weapon in terms of, you know, effectiveness and the capacity to injure your opponents. Do I need to hold back any amount of force to reduce danger to myself when I'm using a stick? Of course not. Additional point. Another point people brought up that I just want to quickly address is uh, that uh, matter of speed, uh, ease of acceleration for the nunchucks, and also speed of follow up strikes. And so the first thing is that it doesn't take too much effort for me to accelerate this into uh, a fairly uh, hard strike where the, the velocity of the nunchuck is moving pretty fast and it doesn't take too much effort to do. Discounting a couple of important things to think that that is a phenomenal thing, when in actual fact, it's not really, okay? For 
First off, momentum is a combination of velocity and mass. And even though you can accelerate the nunchucks pretty fast, the reason is, is because you're only accelerating this portion right here and uh, there's less mass in it. So it's gonna be striking with less force because you're only hitting with that part, all right? Now compare that to a stick. First, you can accelerate it pretty fast, okay? And so if you just do the thing, it is, all right? Okay, the next part, it's hitting with more mass. And as to speed, I think it's pretty, I think that was moving pretty fast, pretty quickly. And already it's gonna be hitting with way more power. Now, did it take more energy to accelerate the stick to a comparable speed as the nunchucks? Yeah, probably. Is that a problem? I don't really think so. I mean, you know, it's not that heavy. And unless you're particularly out of shape, the, to think that you're gonna get exhausted to the point where you can't fight, it happens, of course. But I think a stick is light enough that the extra amount of exertion you might need to use for a stick compared to nunchucks isn't gonna be that much of an issue. And all the drawbacks that comes with nunchucks on top of it, doesn't balance it out. Another point people raised is that you can hit with nunchucks multiple times faster. So right here, I just go hit, hit, like that, okay? Now, first of all, that doesn't redeem them, all right? And you can't fully control, like this is a very controlled situation where I'm hitting a static target, so I can make sure I can aim my first hit in such a way that I know it'll follow through and I'll be able to successfully do the full-up strike, right? Hit, hit, okay? So can I be that assured of such control in a real fight? No, I can't, all right? And so the fact that you think you might be able to hit with an unchuck faster, okay, in succession, one, first let's test it. Can I actually hit faster in succession than a stick? I mean, I mean, I think that is as generous a setup as I was doing with the nunchucks. It's a static target. All right, what about two hits with the first hit? So that's pretty darn fast as well. In actual fact, I think the follow through might have been a bit quicker with the stick. It's hitting with more mass, because we know it's just bigger, and you can put more power into it. And so I actually think you, you can hit just as fast with other weapons in succession, in repeated follow-up strikes. And so again, when people say you can hit really, really fast with an unchuck, well, you can hit really, really fast in succession with a, a stick as well. So it feels like some people, not everyone, are really reaching for anything without considering, okay, can you achieve the same effect with other weapons? And if you can, oftentimes the weapons can achieve that effect greater because a stick can hit way harder. And that was like, look at the deflection this guy is rocking from those hits compared to the two hits of the nunchucks. <clears throat> yeah, it would, like he'll be feeling it, but there was nowhere near as much kinetic energy being transferred into him because I'm only hitting with this little thing, okay? When that hits, especially the mass of this, plus the velocity I was able to throw into it, but it doesn't have my full weight behind the strike. That's the point. And so, yeah, you can hit fast with nunchucks, but they're much weaker than with a stick, and you can hit just as fast with a stick when you actually try it. Another point I want to raise is that nunchucks will not always hit with incapacitating force, or should I say they are far less likely to hit with incapacitating force than many other weapons, not only because of the striking power is reduced so much because you're only hitting really with the mass of this, okay? But um, if someone's like hopped up on drugs or really, the adrenaline's going, you know, they can knock aside nunchucks with their arms. Yeah, it'll hurt, but nunchucks are much less likely to break bone than a good solid stick. The other thing is, there is an area of null effect on nunchucks, okay? It's right here. Why do you think I can do this, right, on my arm, I'm swinging it hard, and it's gonna hit, it's, out, it's striking me, but it's bouncing off. Why? Because I'm hitting it with <laughs> the cord. The cord is actually hitting, and so because of that, I can whack my side, I can whack my thigh, I can whack my thigh in there like that, and it's not hurting. This is the area of no effect. But guess what? That can happen if you're striking. If someone gets in too close, watch what happens when I actually strike with this area on the dummy, right? And I'll go down and full force it. Nothing. You wouldn't have felt that, okay? Now, if I hit in the same range as the stick here, do you think it's gonna, you know, feel nothing? Oh, you almost fell over. Let me do that again. Ah! 
So nunchucks are particularly crap in close range as well. And yeah, look, you can probably choke it up and actually hit someone, you know, or, or chop it in half and do the <laughs> scream sticks or whatever. But in the regular strikes, okay, you have an area of close range in which the utility is completely nullified. Compared to a stick, you hit with this area still, people are gonna feel it. Another point. Now, this is important. If you have an opponent who is like on adrenaline and they're really coming at you and you're in a situation where you can't run away, you have to defend yourself and like, for some random chance, you just had a weapon that's usually illegal on you or, or, or just a stick that's not illegal. But all right, compare the two, okay? Which has more stopping power? Which actually has the greater capacity to incapacitate someone? Nunchucks, okay? Like if someone blocks their arm, you can deflect a nunchuck on your arm. It'll hurt, but it's far less likely to break bone. Compare that to a full swing from a stick. That would break bone, okay? So in terms of stopping power, nunchucks are garbage again. There was a fairly prominent comment under my last video in which people were bringing up the fact that these started out as a farming implement and they're not really weapons, so you shouldn't, you know, I don't know what the takeaway from that was. Like, it seemed like people were saying that to try and say I shouldn't really judge them as harshly as a regular weapon as a result. That, you know, if that's the case, I'm not sure if that's what they, that they were implying, but it's a bit baffling to me for a number of reasons. One, the fact that they come from farming implements, to me, is largely irrelevant for the validity of them as a weapon, okay? Regardless, you're going to want to find and know how effective these things are, doesn't matter where they come from. That's the first point. Uh, the next point is that are they farming implements now? And the answer is, of course, n no, okay? Nunchucks are solely weapons in the modern day. Flat, okay? So look, I understand why nunchucks were developed as a weapon, you know, converting farm implements to weapons, and you had similar, now to so say all the, um, was it rice threshing? There was a rice threshing tool, looked exactly like the weapon style nunchucks we have today. I actually think they might've had a longer cord and other things. And so if you're just looking for anything to be a weapon, and you've already grabbed all the sticks that you can find, which is a stretch to me, because it's pretty easy to find a stick in my opinion. Because <laughs> uh, I'd realize if I was in that situation, it's like, and you had these, you know, rice threshing tools and uh and it's like i need a weapon is it hard to find a stick do you have a broom do you have a shovel or anything like any number of things but if you really if all the other sticks were found and used and you had nothing else it's like okay i can understand someone picking up nunchucks because there's nothing else but also in the reality Perhaps people actually thought that they were vastly better than what they really are, which I honestly have seen a lot in pop culture and the modern day, right there, where people have loved nunchucks. I've loved nunchucks. I've legitimately believed them to be great weapons in the past. And so I kind of just proves that it's very possible for people to assume that they're good weapons and therefore they use them under that assumption, even though they're not. Uh, but okay, so farming implements as tools, yeah, yeah you know, doesn't validate them as weapons in the modern day in any measure. You can still practice them for fun. I'm not saying oh, like I have control over that. You don't need my permission. You can believe whatever you want. And so I'm not trying to take away people's fun in that regard because this, look, even today, I went outside and just did a bit of spinning because they're fun. They're actually kind of fun to use. I would never use them in a fight though. All right? So you can still have fun with them and uh, you know, to keep a tradition alive, of course, all right? But to actually say these are legitimate self-defense weapons, Mmm. I, I, mm, I, mm. Okay, what about them being legitimate weapons for self-defense in the modern day? No, no, they're garbage, they're dangerous, okay. One, um, they're, they're not a farming implement anymore, and so anyone who sees them will know that they're a dedicated weapon. Uh, and it's a bit suspicious seeing someone carry around nunchucks. Obviously, you could think, well, it's just in case something bad might happen, there's that. And it's funny how the, the laws, like nunchucks, are seen as like the most dangerous weapons there. There are so many, they're illegal in a lot of countries and other things like that. Where something like this, which is vastly more deadly, is not. So there, there's that. I mean, like, are they a good legitimate self-defense weapon? First point, they're not a good weapon, so there's that out the bat. And the other part is that they're often illegal in most places, so there'd be a bad self-defense weapon just on the get-go, where it's more legal to carry something around like this, which is more effective and more deadly, and it's legal. And so already this is a better self-defense weapon for the fact that 
you know, you're not going to get in trouble carrying it around. So there's that point. I mean, the other thing, if you really want reach, there's, you know, extendable battens, depending on the legality of where you live, that are far better. Like, they're concealable, they, you could extend them to similar reach, and they're made actually hefty, okay? So Ben, he's a former police officer, by the way, and so he has a bit of experience with police battens, the actual extendable ones, and they're hefty, all right? They actually have weight behind them, even though, you know, like, I've never held one before, right? And they always look flimsy to me, but Ben's like, no, they're hefty. They'll knock someone out. And they got like, like they like they have this ball on the end. So they're almost extendable maces, okay? And so, um, concealable, reach, v and power <laughs> generations. <laughs> so there's all that, right? And then you have all the other problems that just exist with nunchucks from the get-go. And uh, like, hammers, <laughs> hammers are very dangerous. And uh, concealable if you want to conceal it. Uh, and the other thing, like this is the reality, if you're th really thinking about proper self-defense, okay, the best thing, the best tactic, you know, martial art technique this should be taught as, right, in self-defense to uh, win a fight is to run away, avoid the fight completely. Like, like, like seriously, you know, you could say, You've never lost a street fight because you've been smart enough to just walk away from them. <laughs> like, they're like, um, conflict avoidance should be the primary thing in regards to self-defense. That's the best weapon you should use. So self-defense is an interesting topic. And uh, like the capacity to injure someone and especially carrying a weapon or even using a weapon in an altercation like that should be vastly, by every measure, the very last resort when your life is in legitimate danger and you can't get away. And for me, I know that's very rare because most situations you can get away. And so I'm not saying there aren't dangerous parts in the world where there are, you could actually more likely get in a situation where having a tool to help defend yourself would be beneficial, of course, okay? Not discounting that, but it's just important to consider as well. And like, seriously, especially if someone is coming at you with a bloody knife, like, oh, there are, uh, if you think I could take one because I got nunchucks, I'll just knock him in the hand and stuff like that, you idiots. No, run away, okay? Special Forces Navy SEAL Ranger here to show you a couple knife defenses, one in particular. Now, I'm just gonna go full speed on this. So pay attention and hope you learn something. Good. As good as you think you are, even if you are a legitimate master or anything like that, you cannot take away the fact of chance in that altercation where you might make a mistake or the other guy might get lucky or anything like that. And it takes like a fraction of a second to do a lethal wound with a knife and you're dead and you're gonna bleed out or something like that. And so never think that you can take someone on a knife, especially with something as crappy as these, okay? And even if you have something better like a knife or a stick, run away is your first damn option. Mm -hmm. So those are definitely my thoughts on self-defense and my, my, like, my takeaway is carrying a weapon just kind of puts you in the mindset of getting ready to resist someone and that's the worst thing when you have any possibility to run away and you don't need to get to that level. So I'll, that's all I'll say on that. There are two larger points that people are raising more prominently to try and say this is where the nunchucks are more valid as a weapon and uh, thinking about it, only one of them really sticks in my mind and again even if that is the case i still hold my opinion very much that they are garbage weapons they're rarely used in the, in that way and uh, like i said at the very beginning my main point is that a weapon should be good in as many situations and contexts as possible as a valid weapon and if the nunchucks are only somewhat useful in one and that's still debatable because i'll talk about it crap Garbage weapons. Okay, what are those two things? First one people were saying was grappling, and the other one is concealability, okay? You can hide them, and in terms of effectiveness out of the weapons you can hide, uh, they're actually, you know, have a decent amount of power generation. And that one, like, I think that last one is the only one that has some room for debate. I don't think it's wholly just yes all the way. I think but at least we can discuss it more. The grappling one, when I think about it, is actually, to me, very baffling, okay? And it goes into that thing that I was saying where I feel the grappling capacity of nunchucks is one of those, uh, we like, let's think of anything we can do to, because grappling, right? Because they're not efficient grappling weapons at all. They're not made for it, first thing. And it's like, because literally, if you were to make a grappling type of weapon, you would end up with something like the man catcher, okay? I've made a video on the man catcher. There is a dedicated grappling 
grappling weapon that was made for it, okay? And for the context in which it was meant for, it's actually quite useful, and it has more context in which it is an efficient weapon than these things, okay? Remember, I think the nunchucks have very few. Now, the man catcher is probably going to be garbage on... Actually, there might be what uses you could use on a battlefield. Like, if you're behind a shield wall or something like that, and you had a man catcher over the shield wall to try and incapacitate... So, even the man catcher, okay, with... A a that is a super specific weapon, has more context and uses there and benefits than these things, in my opinion. Um, well, uh, look, can you strike... A yeah, you can strike with a man catcher. I'm just trying to think... Of so, anyway, but... That's my point, it's like, that's what a dedicated grappling weapon, and as a dedicated grappling weapon, it has far more uses uh, and context in which it is beneficial as a grappling weapon than these things, okay? They're not designed to be a grappling weapon, and when you think about them as to what they can do and achieve as a grappling tool, they're garbage. They really are. Like, is there anything on them that can naturally wrap and grab someone without you actually having to manipulate, twist around, or get lit, or something like that, okay? And, and think about this, seriously. Because if you're gonna use these as a grappling tool, you're gonna most often have to use two hands at least when you lock the grab. If you swing it around a limb and then you're able to grab and, and, and twist around or something like that and, and lock something in, both your hands are now being used in locking away one limb of the opponent. Now, if you got it around the neck, okay, granted, but the opponent still has their arms, right? And you, your, your hands are, are tied, they're you, you're like, okay. And if you grappled a limb, like an arm or something like that, both your arms are taken and they have a free one that can still strike you. So already, I'm seeing a lot of problems with the grappling capacity of these things. The other thing is how inefficiently and the things you need to do to actually grapple. You need to wrap it around, get leverage, and then use both hands to do it. You know what is a vastly, infinitely greater grappling tool than these? Your hand. You can grab a limb with a single hand, and it literally can wrap around and lock on something. They're amazing! Hands are great! They're, they're really useful, okay? And in martial arts, you can grapple with them really effectively. Much better than these things, okay? And so seriously, if someone was rushing you, and their intent was to wrestle you, okay, would you honestly think, ah, I've got nunchucks, I have an advantage in... No, they'll get in the way, you would drop them! And then you'd have to engage in proper, dedicated grappling, okay? Uh, would they be useful in trying to grapple a, an opponent who has a dagger or knife or something like that? Now, the only advantage I see is that it could help keep the dagger further away from... But, that they're, they're so much more awkward and inefficient, okay? Uh, especially locking away. But if you try and hold something away, they're, they're not efficiently made to it. You can't, you know, hold them out for a full length like a stick, okay? You could, uh, um, all right, you could whack the opponent's hand who's holding the knife. That's a possibility. It's interesting the conclusions that some people were stating so categorically that this is what nunchucks were for, and oftentimes they were contradicting other people saying other categorical statements that this is what they were for. Specifically, some people were saying they're meant for defense. They're a defense. <laughs> they're garbage for defense, okay? So if anyone says that, no, they're wrong. Um, but other people saying they're meant to disarm. They're a disarming weapon. No, they're garbage for that too. Um, but this is what some people are saying. And look, you could try and disarm someone by whacking in them in the hand, as you could try and strike someone in the hand with a stick, with a sword, with so many other weapons. Just the, the fact that you can whack someone in the hand hard with nunchucks doesn't make them great at disarming, okay? In actual fact, it's harder to aim nunchucks because you can't direct the point with precision because it's on a cord and it's, and it's got all that, okay? So, uh, you, look, I'm not saying you can't be precise. I'm saying you will not be able to be as precise as you could achieve in other weapons that you have far more control over. That's the same point I was making with the deflection and hitting you back, okay? No matter how much you train, they, they have a much higher chance of hitting you and, uh, be, and losing control of where it's swinging than any other weapon, which makes them garbage. So I'm not completely sold that grappling with nunchucks because you might be able to catch an opponent and, and then... Because once, okay, someone is coming down on the strike and you catch it, you literally have to bring your arm in closer to try and wrap it around or do any number of things, and that's an additional step you need to do after the point of contact to grapple with them, okay? And, uh, and contrast that to something where you just simply grab or block and grab, and like we're looking at a single move or two moves to be able to grapple someone with a knife, where this, the movements you need to do are longer, wider, takes longer time, Time, and usually at least more than one move to do an effective grapple with nunchucks. Now, if you had nothing but nunchucks and someone was coming at you with a knife, sure, I can see maybe it's good to know how to grapple with them, but my kind of point is, is that 
if you had an option to pick so many other weapons, you wouldn't have picked these in the first place and you wouldn't be trying to grapple with them because you wouldn't have them. So in what situations would you actually pick nunchucks, okay? And we're gonna come back to the concealable weapon aspect of this, because that's the only one where I think maybe in nearly every other situation in which you knew if you're fighting against other people with weapons or if you know you're going into a, like a situation or you can just carry a weapon and you don't need to conceal it. And even if you do need to conceal it, there are other potentially concealable weapons that are still even better but we'll, we'll get there but still like battlefield scenario adventuring fighting games maxi from song hell and stuff like that like no <laughs> nunchucks are a horrible weapon to use but if you needed to hide a weapon okay this is the main one this is the main one where and again it's like one of the only things in which nunchucks might have something but again i'm not so sure because this is where there's a there's a point to them okay they are legitimately easier to conceal than a stick of similar length does that mean you wouldn't be able to conceal something like this no you could i mean it would be more difficult okay um you had maybe under your shirt and a bit into your pants and you would be able to conceal it especially if you had like something like a cloak or something like that this is actually a decently concealed weapon than say a sword even because there's no cross guard you don't have to worry about blade uh, cover it you can actually just hug it on your skin and so this is the other thing is that even though nunchucks can more easily be concealed than say a stick which is a vastly superior weapon it's not to say you can't conceal a stick and if you're having trouble you could shorten the stick even by a little about that much and it'll be really easy to conceal and it is still in a, like, I think you could debate quite strongly if you look at it that it still very well might be a vastly superior weapon to the nunchuck even being shorter than the nunchuck's full reach and one of the other interesting things that kind of puts in this is that again it goes into contradictory statements that people are now saying how nunchucks should be used in response to my video looking through the comments some people are saying you should only strike fully extending and then somebody's saying no you shouldn't have fully extended you you don't fully like some are saying you need to hold it down at the base some closer up and and so the people that are saying that you don't fully extend when you strike, well, that means you're losing one of the advantages I would have assumed comes from nunchucks is the reach capacity. And some people are saying you don't do full strikes because it has a greater chance of bouncing and deflecting. So you do quick snipey strikes and then it's like, okay, you're losing heaps of power. So there are so many like interesting things that people are saying where it's like, it's making the situation worse. And if some of those things are even true, that just means you could achieve just as much with a shorter stick. And I actually think you could generate almost as much power, if not more, a shorter stick than the full length of normal nunchucks because of better uh, transfer of force. And then you can conceal it just as well. And on that matter, there are other weapons that you can conceal that are vastly more deadly. A knife, okay, any sharp, stabby, pointy thing is vastly more deadly than nunchucks are, okay? Like in orders of magnitude. So any knife is already vastly better and easy to conceal than nunchucks on top of that. What about a hammer? Okay, even a mace, uh, like all these things are concealable weapons, some as simple as farm implements, like a hammer, like a, a shorter but still long enough stick, okay? And so the thing about nunchucks is that they can fold into because of this, all right? And that means you could try and say nunchucks out of all the easily concealable weapons can get the most leverage. And you could try and then say the most power generation, but no, because I would say a hammer that has a, a concentrated amount of force, even though shorter, it doesn't have as much reach, could produce vastly more power because of its weight and its and it, and it focus point of its weight. And so uh, reach, well, because uh, like, look, we're trying to break down what are the advantages that you get, because the advantages you can fold it into. So this is a weapon that essentially can flip out to be longer than what it needs to be when you're hiding it, okay? And so if you prefer the reach that you can get from this concealable weapon for power generation, you can achieve that with a hammer or a mace just as easily. Okay then, so if you think there's a good concealable weapon because of reach, okay? And this could be the concealable weapon that has the most reach amongst, you know, the types of weapons that are easy to conceal, possibly. Okay, reach is an interesting thing, but there is a big problem with the nunchuck's reach capacity. Some people say you shouldn't fully extend for one to get proper control, so there's that problem. But the other thing is that you actually don't have full control over this end, all right? You have far less precision and the reach is kind of nullified because you can't stretch it out because 
I, I, so the reach is only in striking where it actually swings out and in that you have less precision, less control, there is the likelihood that it can bounce and hit you even if you're being careful or striking in a more controlled or practice way or whatever there's still a chance that it can do that all right um, and so and you don't even get the uh, advantage of reach if you want to use it in defense or any static kind of defense. In contrast that to a stick it's static you can actually use it in static you know distance defense in that sense and much better for you know thrusting and, and uh, kind of doing the uh, pokey pokies. So even as a concealable weapon I'm not sure it's the best. I, I will happily concede that there's an argument to be had there but it's not a complete it's a great concealable weapon. I actually think not really. I, I, I believe you can get just as much advantage out of a lot of other weapons and this is one of the only contexts in which the nunchucks could have some ground but because it's so debatable eh. and then when you extend that outside of a concealed weapon they're garbage on so many levels as like and when i say garbage it's mainly i'm comparing it to all so many weapons they have available even the humble stick like the stick just outweighs it in so many ways even i think in some cases if you shorten it and make it more concealable i think the stick is probably still better. Uh, those are some of the points that I wanted to reply to and uh, if uh, this comes in, like because I'm making this the day after there might be reply videos that are made that literally are arguing the points I've been arguing against I haven't seen them uh, and so this isn't me trying to say because I, I, I get that uh, you know nunchucks are beloved weapons and people are honestly like there there are already some people that are already defensive about them and things and remember I always said that it's funny how they better than nothing <laughs> like I just I keep thinking they argue it's like I've never hit myself with my own fist by accident <laughs> so you know they're, they're here but you can generate more power you can absolutely generate more power with these things than bare fists and uh, gee if I had nunchucks right if, I, if nunchucks were the only thing that I had as weapons you know what I would probably do is cut them uh, cut them and just use them as as two sticks as two wacky sticks i'll get more control i'll be able to strike with two different weapons at the same time that'd be vastly less dangerous to me uh and so even if nunchucks were the only option left i still wouldn't use nunchucks because i could convert them into a weapon set that in my opinion is still better so i think i might even need to change my statements that says that they're better than nothing because if you have them look can you cut that i think maybe you can even yank them off the chain if with enough force if you have time to do it and so maybe if you didn't have time it's like oh all right, chuck sure okay but yeah i'm pretty they're pretty poor so <laughs> i'm not sure if this video upset people even more but it's a fur i always love further discussion and there were things that i felt people were just not uh, perhaps missing from the first video but granted that first video wasn't a broad discussion okay it was a more narrow focused analysis on them as weapons in general not looking at the specific areas in which some people are saying they have validity but I, I honestly felt it wasn't needed in, in that main video because as I mentioned I said in that video that I felt that they were better than nothing then not sure about my feelings now but anyway then which was a direct acknowledgement that yeah there's some situations which they are useful and then people were pointing out those situations in the comments with the belief that that you know validated them or redeemed them from all the other terrible things that you get from them which I don't think they do so anyway, thanks for watching, uh, thank you for the further discussion, and uh, I hope to see you on the next video here on Shadowversity. So until then, farewell.